technique for ultrasound examination. Before performing an ultrasound on your patient, you should have an overall understanding of your machine first. Although there are a number of differences between the machines from different companies, their principles are generally the same. For instance, the machines consist of an image display screen and a control panel. Newer machines may even have a touch screen panel for an easier use. The basic and commonly used ultrasound knobs are as followed. TJC slides for adjust the image brightness at different depth levels and B gain knob for adjust an overall image brightness during the same time. Depth adjustment button leading the image to become larger or smaller and a focus image button for best quality image and a caliper button to measure the size of the lesion. For machines with color doppler function, there will be additional color flow and pulse wave modes. It is vital to study your ultrasound machine functions beforehand in order to obtain optimal images and to reduce any interpretational errors as much as possible. One of the most important equipment for ultrasound examination is the transducer, or what we simply call probe. They tend to vary in sizes, shapes, and serve for different purposes. Higher frequency transducer is usually used for superficial organ examination, while lower frequency transducer is used for deeper structures examination. Generally, the commonly used transducers are the convex probe, which has convex shape and frequency of about 3 to 5 MHz. These are used to study abdominal organs. Next, the linear probe, with flat shape and frequency of about 6 to 15 MHz. These are used for superficial organs exam, like breast or thyroid gland. During abdominal ultrasound examination, the patient should fast for at least 6 to 8 hours before the scan in order to prevent gallbladder contraction and to avoid bowel movements, which could potentially obscure the organs under studied. An optimal amount of gel should be used, serving both as a media and allows the probe to make good contact with the skin to achieve the best possible images. During the steps of examination, we recommend that you exam each system respectively. Step 1. The Hepatobiliary System Exam We recommend that you start to scan from the left hepatic lobe first by placing the probe at the epigastric area both in transverse and longitudinal planes. A normal left lobe tends to be triangular in shape making an acute angle about 45 degrees. Then, moving the probe along the subcostal area, you will see the left lobe continue to the right. This is left portal vein, with its characteristic hyperechoic wall. To examine the right lobe, you can use both subcostal and intercostal scans, which means placing the probe in between the ribs. By asking the patient to perform a salva may help to push the liver downwards, which is especially useful in patients with high liver position. Scan the right lobe up to the diaphragm, which appears as an echoogenic line, and also scan up to the right lung, which will be shown as right lung echo. A longitudinal scan at anterior axillary line, the right hepatic lobe will have an acute angle about 75 degrees. And the tip of the right hepatic lobe should not be beyond the lower right renal pole. A normal liver polynchyma should have homogeneous echogenicity, a bit higher than that of the right kidney. For gallbladder, they normally locate at the gallbladder fossa, lying between the left and right lobes of the liver. 
well distended gallbladder will show intraluminal fluid echo or unechoic and has thin wall around 2 to 3 mm in thickness. For common bile duct or CBD are normally seen at the porta hepatis, aligning along the main portal vein. By placing a probe perpendicular to the subcostal area will usually give you the best view of CBD, which normally locates anterior to the portal vein. A normal diameter should not exceed 7 mm, and this small round structure intersecting with the CBD is a hepatic artery. This is right portal vein, which further blanches into anterior and posterior sections. There are three hepatic veins directing towards the IVC, which are best seen during subcostal scan position. The differences between hepatic and portal vein are that the hepatic vein has no wall blindness and the direction is different. These are the left hepatic vein, middle hepatic vein, and the right hepatic vein, respectively. Step 2 Kidney Examination Right kidney locates below the right hepatic lobe. To examine the right kidney, place the patient in right side up position or left lateral decubitus. To measure the size of the kidney, you should measure in its maximal length. Normal right kidney should have lower palenchymal echo than that of the liver. The central hyperechoic area within the kidney is called central echo complex, which contains renal sinus fat and pelvic calicial system. Normal size of the kidney is about 9 to 10 centimeters in length. To examine the left kidney, place the patient left side up or light lateral decubitus. Left kidney locates below the spleen with the same appearance as the right kidney, with palenchymal echo slightly less than the spleen's. This structure behind the left kidney is the left psoas muscle with its striated echoic appearance. Step 3. Splenic Examination Spleen locates above left kidney and below the left lung, which you can see as right lung echo. We should scan up to the left lung to make sure that there is no left polo effusion. Normal spleen size measured from upper to lower pole should not exceed 12 cm. Step 4. Pancreas Examination Place the patient in supine position. Gradually move the transducer in axial plane slowly downwards from the epigastric area until we see the left hepatic lobe. The landmark to show the pancreas is the confluence between the splenic vein joining with the main portal vein in an inverted comma shape. Normal pancreas tend to appear as hyperechoic organ and transversely orientated across the portal vein and splenic vein communication. Normal pancreatic width are usually less than 2 to 3 cm. We may see superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein behind the pancreas. Step 5. Aorta and IVC examination. In transverse plane, the aorta locates to the left of the spine, while IVC locates to the right. Normally, the area allowed the aorta is clear without any organ surrounding it. We might see aortic blanches like celiac artery and superior mesenteric artery blanching off from the anterior part of the aorta. In longitudinal plane, the aorta is at the left side of your body with slightly thick wall and looking pulsatile. We may see its blanches like SMA very clearly, especially in thin patient. 
we could trace down along the aorta towards its bifurcation. On the other hand, IVC tend to have thin wall, not pulsatile, and may collapse in relation with respiration. Step 6. Lower abdominal examination. With full bladder preparation, will allow us to see the pelvic organ behind the bladder more clearly. In poorly distended bladder, there could be bowel gas superimposition. A normal urinary bladder will show smooth and thin wall, which we should scan in both axial and longitudinal planes. In female patient, normal uterus locates just posterior to the bladder, and again, both planes examination should be performed. A normal uterus size is about 3 by 5 by 7 cm and the size tend to vary with menstrual cycle. We will see the normal endometrial echo as a hyperechoic line within the uterine cavity. The thickness is normally about 2 to 3 mm and may vary with menstrual cycle but should not exceed 10 mm. Inferior to the uterus, in longitudinal plane, or cervix and vagina respectively. For ovaries, we could see them in some patients, but not in everyone. To exam the ovaries, we should place at the respective contralateral sides in order to use bladder as an acoustic window. And for the left ovary, we should place the right side of the bladder and vice versa for the right ovary. Normal ovary size should not be more than 2.5 to 3 cm. 